Hello viewers, thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marilla. Uh, I'm always excited. I always feel honored and I feel privileged. Yeah, that you decided to watch this video. I pray in the name of Jesus that this video will educate you. I pray that it will give you revelation of who your Father is. Praise God. And I pray that what you see in these videos will impart your heart and bring understanding to you so that you will be able to go to that next level that you need to go. Don't be satisfied where you at. God has something better for you. Your father loves you and he has something better for you. Now before I start the teaching here, uh, the Holy Spirit always has us to go to the throne, praise the Lord. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're going to bow our heads, we're going to close our eyes, and put our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. You know, in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, <clears throat> Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished praying, one of his disciples um, said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Well, Jesus did. And Jesus started by saying to them, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is in the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen, amen. And that's how Jesus taught how to pray. Praise God. I hope you learn how to pray too. And you can. Read your word, meditate, study, and apply what it says. And just start talking to your father. And then your, your father will talk back to you. Praise the Lord. Okay, if you're taking notes, amen. If you're taking, open up your journal, open up your Bible, and let's write the aim of this month's teaching. It's called Understanding Your Heavenly Father. Understanding Your Heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. And we have a scripture <clears throat> that we need to go to. We need to go to John chapter 17. Praise the Lord. John 17, verse 6. John 17, verse 6. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of John, the gospel, the gospel of John. Chapter 17. <clears throat> John 17. And we'll start with verse 6. I'll do it in the New Living Translation. Verse 6. He starts by saying, Jesus starts by saying, I have revealed you, revealed you to the one you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. You know, in the New King James, it says, I have manifest, manifest. And that word manifest means to reveal. In verse 7, he says, Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. Jesus is talking to the Father. Jesus is telling the disciples and talking to the Father. For, in verse 8, For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. So you see this message, <laughs> it's God's. Even though Jesus is the word, praise the Lord. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you. 
and they believe you sent me. Verse 9. My prayer is not for the world, but for those who have given me, those you have given me, because they belong to you. So we've belonged to the Father. The Father gave us over to Jesus. And Jesus is glorifying the Father and praising the Father for what they did, what the Father did to give us to Jesus. And then he said in verse 10, all who are mine belong to you. Now the, fa- now the Son has given, them, given us back to the Father. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me. So they bring me glory. Now I'm departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father. You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name. So they will be united just as we are. Verse 12. During my time, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that, so that not one was lost except the one heading for destruction. Oh, God. As the scripture foretold. Now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world. So they will be filled with my joy. We're supposed to be filled with the joy of the Lord. Verse 14. I have given them your word. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world. Just as I do not belong to the world. Verse 15, please. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. Praise the Lord. Verse 16. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is true. Verse 18. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. Verse 19. And I will give myself as a holy sacrifice. Oh, praise the Lord for them. So they can be made holy by your truth. Verse 20, please. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. See the message. Verse 21. I pray they will be one just just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I'm in you, and may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. Verse 22, I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. So Jesus and the Father are one, and we are one with them. Praise the Lord. Verse 23, I am in them Oh, there you go. And you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Verse 24, please. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me. Because you loved me even before the world began. Okay. Verse 25, please. O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. Verse 26. I have revealed you to them. Mm. Manifest you to them. And I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them. And I will be in them. Somebody say amen to the word. Praise the Lord. John chapter 17. Yeah, that's all right. John 17. In John 17, Jesus prayed what has been called is high Priestly prayer. Write it down if you're taking notes. Jesus prayed what has been called his high priestly prayer. 
on behalf of his disciples, he did that. High priestly prayer on behalf of his disciples. It was his last personal communication with them before he, his arrest, before his trial, and before his crucifixion. Right here, John 17. That was his last communication with them. And then, of course, uh, he got arrested, he went to trial, and he got crucified. Okay? At the beginning of the prayer, and we started in John 17, verse 6, right? Didn't we do that? Let's go back there again, please. John 17, verse 6. This is the beginning of the prayer. He starts like this. I have manifested or I have revealed you, revealed you to the ones you gave me. So Jesus revealed the Father to us. Listen to me. Jesus did not reveal the sacred name of God to us. Because in the Old Testament, about uh, 17 centuries before, 14, 15, 16, 17, around there, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, centuries ago, it was revealed to us. Are you listening to me? The name Jehovah and the name Yahweh was revealed to us. But now here, Jesus is revealing to us the Father. Praise the Lord. So at the beginning of the prayer, he says, I have revealed you to the one you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Stop. That's in the beginning. Now at the end of the prayer, which is verse 26. Let's go to verse 26, please. Verse 26. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. He says in verse 26, I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them. See? See? Your love for me. The reason why God loves us is because Jesus is in us. Amen? Your love for me. Listen, listen, listen. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. All right? So at the beginning and at the end of the prayer, Jesus spoke, Jesus spoke of having made God's name known to his disciple. All right? Jesus here made God's name known to the disciple, and now he's making it known to us. And that name is Father. Praise the Lord. Amen? Father. Praise God. Not his sacred name, Jehovah. Not his sacred name, Yahweh. Not his sacred name, Elohim. Not his sacred name, Adonai. Oh, Jesus, praise the Lord. Not his sacred name, Shalom. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Shama. Those are his sacred name. He gave us the name of our God, Father. Father, praise the Lord. Father. Now let's go to John. Praise the Lord. We're in the book of John, so might as well. Let's go to, let's go to John. John, uh, boy. John 14. Let's go to John 14. Chapter 14, please. John 14. Yeah, that's good. All right. And let's go to verse 6. Wow, we've been doing verse 6 again. Let's do verse 6 again. All right? What did he reveal to us? In chat, what did he reveal to us? He revealed us the name of God for us. We should be calling Father God, Father. Amen. So in John 14, verse 6, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Watch, watch. No one can come to the Father except through me. The closing words 
of the verse. And verse 6 tells us, no one comes to the Father except through me. As you see, once again, our Lord and Savior Jesus is calling God Father. And we need to call God, what? Father. Let's say it three times. Father, Father, Father. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we need Jesus, right, to get to the Father. Because no one gets to the Father unless they go through Him. Praise the Lord. Because He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. Praise the Lord. Amen? So, Jesus made, Jesus made, Jesus made it known to us that the one that sent him was his father, and not only is, his, is, is it Jesus' father, but he's also our father. So write this down. Jesus' main purpose was to bring us to the father. Praise the Lord. We were so separated from the Father when we were in sin, minister. We were so separated. But Jesus' main purpose was to bring us to the Father. Did you get that? All right, good. Praise the Lord. Okay? And he spoke it to the disciples, and he's speaking it to us right now. How's he doing that? Through his word. Praise the Lord. Through his word. Amen. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 1, and let's read 1 and 2. And let's, let's uh, articulate verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> you there? Wonderful. In the New Living Translation, it says, <clears throat> Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors. Now watch, he says. Look what he says. Through the prophets. Verse 2. And now, in these five God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance. And through the Son, and through the Son, here we go, Pastor, and through the Son, He created the universe. The universe. The universe. And remember that God, Father God, left his imprint in the universe. In the earth. In everything that is living. Praise the Lord. And everything that is alive. You can see the imprint of God. Praise God. Of our Father. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. <clears throat> Let's read it in the New King James. Amen. God who at various time in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these days, the last days, spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, the universe, who being the brightness of the glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majestic on high. Come on, I'm going to four. 
having become so much better than the angels, as he has, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. And that name that we're talking about is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, in Hebrews 1 and 2, the writer's telling us that Jesus, write this down, Jesus was a different kind of messenger. All right? Understand, that's what it's explaining to us. So if Jesus was a messenger, now hold off, hold off, hold off. And Jesus was the word, but yet Jesus is a messenger from the Father. And he said, it, you, you read it in John 17, he said, this message that you gave me, I've given to them. So us pastors shouldn't think that we are the message. We're a protege of the message. Or we shouldn't think that we're the teacher, because we're not. We're just students of the message. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was a different kind of messenger. Write it down. He was not merely a prophet, because Jesus was a prophet too. He was also a son. So Jesus was a prophet and a son. And he gave us that, he gave us revelation that have never been given before. Oh, Jesus, praise the Lord. And that, that revelation was the name of his father. Father. Father God. Praise the Lord. And many more revelations. Because remember, he, he, he said to them, what you see me do, I seen the Father do. What you hear me speak, I heard the Father speak. I don't speak on my own. I speak by, by representing the Father. And the Holy Spirit does the same thing. He says, I don't, I don't speak on my own. I speak about what I heard from the Father and the Son. Praise the Lord. So this revelation, write this down. Jesus gave us a revelation that only a son could bring. Praise the Lord, somebody. That is deeper than what you understand. Jesus gave us revelation that only a son could bring. For a son to be able to have revelation, okay, listen to me, on a spiritual father, that son has to know what the spiritual father is about. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Glory to God. That's the word. Jesus saw what his father used to do. Jesus knew his, listen, listen, are you listening to me? This is very deep, man. Stay here. Don't, let, don't get lost. Jesus spoke about his father's business. Now, how can a son talk about his father's business if he doesn't know his father? So you have to know your father to be able to talk about and imitate that man, that man of God, that spiritual man of God, if you call him dad. I'm going somewhere else with this now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Woo, Jesus, I love you. <laughs> Jesus knew his father's business. And it is your business to know your father's business. It's my business to know my father's business. A revelation. Jesus brought a revelation that only a son could bring. Because it was a revelation of the father. Are you understanding, class? How can you bring a revelation of the Father if you're not a son or a daughter? All right, let's, go, let's do this, please, let's do this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew 11. Because for, for us to understand that Father God is our Father, 
We need to come into the fullness of the revelation. If we don't come into the fullness of the revelation of God the Father, you'll never know God as the Father. You'll know Him as God. And God doesn't want you to know Him as God. God wants you to know Him as Father. Well, I'm starting to get an amen now. Well, I need it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Matthew, please. Matthew, amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Matthew eleven twenty seven. I'm reading out of a King James now. He says, I'm going to read it. Jesus says, all things, what's that family? He said, all things, not some things, all things. That, 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 that just closed the case right there. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. So I believe that all things include the revelation. The fullness of the revelation. And, and what I'm going to ask you, class, today is, do we have the fullness of the revelation of God as the Father? Okay? So he says, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Except the Father. But the Son also knows the Father. Because there is intimacy and there is personal relationship. See? There has to be a personal relationship and there has to be intimacy. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For us to be able to come into that fullness of the revelation, God the Father. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone knows the Father except the Son. There we go. And the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. So I cannot know the Father unless the Son reveals it to me. And then, if we go to, let's go to, um, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what am I hearing? Once I come into the fullness, once I come into the fullness of the revelation of God the Father, then I will have an understanding that I'm a child of God. How many of us understand that we are sons and daughters of glory? Praise the Lord. We are sons and daughters of glory. So when you come into that full revelation of, the, of God the Father, then you understand that you're a child of God. Okay, now let's go to Genesis 127. Genesis 127, please. Genesis 127. <clears throat> In, Ge in Genesis 127, the Bible tells us, so God created man in his own image. Come on, family, we're training our spirit right now. Everybody should be up in the name of Jesus. Don't let the word of God put you asleep. It should not put you asleep. It should, be having, it should be having you up. Right now, this is your spiritual cup of coffee. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created man. He created him. God, he, God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And of course, in verse 28, then God blessed us and said to us, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. 
have dominion over the fish, over the sea, of the sea, over the birds, of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Sounds like we're sons and daughters of God, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. Let's go to 1 Peter. Let's go back into the New Testament. Let's go to 1 Peter, Peter chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Amen? 1 Peter, man. We got to get to know the revelation of who the Father is. Because something's going to happen to you when you get the revelation of who your Father is. Something's going to happen to you. You're not going to live life the way you've been living life. So, uh, 1 Peter, 1 Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 2, uh, verse 10. We were once, it says, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. That was us. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Through Christ, through Christ Jesus, Christ's purpose was, and he did accomplish his purpose, was to bring us to the Father. And reveal the Father to us. Praise the Lord. So here in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 10 tells us that one time we didn't, we didn't have God. We, he says, who once were not people, but who are now the people of God. We weren't people of God at one time. Oh, we said we knew God, but our, our action told, us, told, told those that really knew God, you don't belong to God. Because, hey, listen to me. If you really love God, you won't draw away from God. You will draw closer to God. So when things are going bad, some of us draw to God. And when things are going good, we draw away from God. That's crazy. We should be drawing more closer. And then there's some of us, when things go bad, we just you know, fade away. Some of us, you know, <laughs> different players in the game, but the game never changes. Okay? So, why is it so important for us, are you listening, class, to know the revelation of who my father is? See, if somebody, if, if, if somebody asks you, who's your father? You should be able to, to answer that quickly. Praise the Lord. And once, write this down, once you know the revelation of who your father is, this revelation will help you with your identity. Once you get to know the revelation of who your father is, it will help you with your identity. Okay? Okay? You'll know, hey, I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. You will know who you are. Okay? Because people, people who truly know who God, people who truly know who God, who God as the Father, Am I saying that right? People who truly know God as the Father no longer have an identity problem. Praise the Lord, somebody. So when you don't know who the Father is, you have an identity problem. See, because people that know God as the Father... They know they are children of God. They know they are sons and daughters of glory. Listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. 
Write it down if you want to take notes. They know that the Father created the universe. Praise the Lord. They know lives in them. Now all of us here should know that Father God created the universe. Oh, and by the way, and Father God lives inside of me. And lives inside of you. And something else you should know. That the Father, listen, listen, you shouldn't be worrying about no thing, nothing, nothing, nothing. Are you listening to me? Because the Father cares for you. And the care for, and, and, and how much love he has for you. Listen, God loves you more than you love yourself. And if anybody understands you, it's God. Because God understands you better than you understand yourself. And once again, you've heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. And, and, and you know what God's goal is for you? He wants you to have nothing but the best. But you need to get the revelation. The revelation, the fullness of the revelation of God as a father. That's why Paul was able to say, and my God, <laughs> will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. See, Paul, man, he knew, Paul knew, praise the Lord, who Jesus was, who the Father was, praise God. So Paul knew what Jesus did for us, he connected us to the Father. We're connected to the Father, praise the Lord. The Father, say, I'm connected to the Father, and the Father's connected to me, praise the Lord. I have a father in heaven, praise the Lord, that I can go to and speak to him and he'll start giving me revelation. But I have to understand the father. And when you do that, you no longer will have an identity problem, praise the Lord. You will no longer have an identity problem. Watch this. Go to Romans 8.14. I'm closing up soon. Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. When you are a son and a daughter of glory, you will be led by the Father. You will be led by the, by the Father. The Spirit of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of, the, uh, Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. Oh, Jesus, I love you. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hmm. So then he goes on. I want to I read 15. Then he goes, Receive the Spirit of bondage again. What is the Spirit of bondage? Look, to fear. I'm afraid. I got to do this. I got to do that. Where is the Father? I know you're listening to me. You got to do so many things, but why don't you go to your Father and say, my Father has instructed me and told me to do it like this and do it like that. But Father, but, but Pastor, I can't hear God. Well, when you read your word, God is talking to you. So don't tell me you don't hear the Father. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the Son of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Praise the Lord. You're not an orphan. You're not an orphan. You've been adopted in the family of God. What a wonderful family of the universe to belong to. Praise the Lord. And then he said in, in verse 17, And if children then heir, heirs of God and join heir with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And that word suffer, if you're going through stuff,
just like they, he did. Because remember, he said in the book of John, Jesus, in the world you will have trials and tribulation, but take in consideration that I overcame the world, so in me you'll have peace. But instead, the enemy blind, puts a blindfold over our mind so we can't hear or see the gospel. And now all of a sudden, we think we're the message or the teacher. Or I got a title and I got an ordination, and now I'm all that in a bag of chips. Come on, family. Praise the Lord. We need to stay humble. Oh, I know this. Oh, I know. You, you, you know so much, you can't even pay attention. And then these are the same people that tells me I'm broke. Okay. So you have to have at least one, two, three. You've got to get these three revelations. The first revelation, Father, God created the universe. So that means everything in this universe. I didn't say just, I didn't say earth. I said the universe. So everything in the universe belongs to Father God. Now, let me see, son. If you are a child of God, the Bible just said to me right now in verse 17, Romans 8, 17, that I am an heir of God. I hope some of you are awakening up right now. I'm an heir of God, and I'm a joint heir with Christ. So what belongs to Jesus belongs to me. What belongs to us belongs to Jesus and God. So start right, your covenant right. Start declaring your covenant. Start declaring what belongs to you. If you're going through sickness and disease, then you, start, you need to start decreeing and, and proclaiming uh, 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 health and healing over your life. Because you already got the healing through the cross. Why do you think he got arrested and why do you think he went through a trial and why do you think he got crucified? He got crucified for, for your sickness and disease. He was hung on, hung. And he, and he put on the curse for you and, me, and you and me. So that, don't, that means you and I don't need to be putting on no curse. Now when are we going to get smart? When are we going to wake up out of this thing? Instead we're allowing the people around us and the world to dictate our life. When we should be letting God, Father God, tell us what to do. Praise the Lord. So the first revelation you need to have is, Father, God created the universe. And then you can put, you are an heir. You can put Romans 8, 17. You're an heir. What belongs to God belongs to you. See? Praise the Lord. My daughter knows it. Praise God. My daughter knows that what I have belongs to her. See? She don't, you don't, you don't see, the, you don't see that young lady, you know, confused. Oh, well, you know. Gee, I don't know. Uh, gosh. No, she, she says, my father's going to take care of this. Praise the Lord, somebody. My father's going to take care of this. So that's how we need to be saying, we need to be saying, my father in heaven is going to take care of this mess. He's going to instruct me, give me instruction. He's going to direct me how to do it through the unction of the Holy Spirit. Gee, I wonder who the Holy Spirit is. Okay? So the first revelation, Father God created the universe. Number three, the Father loves me. Don't forget that. The Father loves me. You need to understand that. When you know, when you know that the Father loves you, You'll be so better off, praise the Lord, when you understand that the Father loves me. The, see, you don't have to love me because, you know what? It don't really matter. <laughs> praise the Lord. But my Father in heaven loves me. See? See, you don't love me, that's okay. Because you, you don't have my back. You ain't my divine backup. You're not my source. Father God is. The very breath that I have right now came from my Father. The eyes that, I, that I'm able to see, my sight, my ears, I'm able to hear, I'm able to shout, I'm able to scream, I'm able to eat, I'm able to breathe, I'm able to walk, praise the Lord. There's something more important than just, you know, stupid things, you know. 
Praise the Lord. So, number, number two, the Father loves me. And number three, the Father cares for me. He loves me and he cares for me. Now, we're not just talking about any old uh, person now. We're talking about a spiritual divine being who created the universe. That's your father. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So you should never have an identity crisis. You should never have. Who are you? That's an identity crisis. Who are you? I, I don't know. Hello. Praise the Lord, somebody. What an honor. What a privilege. Praise God. To be able to. That he chose you. He chose me. Out of that fungus that we were in before. Some of us were ready to give up, take off our sneakers and give it up. Okay. And he chose you. He came right on time. Praise the Lord. And he chose you, man, thousands of years ago. Centuries ago. Thousands of years ago. Before the earth was ever made, he chose you. He called you son. He called you daughter. He called me son. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, somebody. I don't know what's going on here, but praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's do one more here. Let's go to Galatians, please. Galatians 3. 326. I know exactly where I'm going. Galatians 3, 26. All right, then we'll close up. Galatians 3, chapter 3, verse 26. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. I know you're there. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 says this. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right. Very good. I want to talk to the viewers. Thank you. I know in the name of Jesus, from this day forward, you won't have no more identity crisis. You will understand. You will know that you are a son and daughter of glory. Praise God. God bless you. We'll see you real soon. Amen.